Let's have some F-U-N. We break down some of the fun plays, teams, and goals from this week, and some of the not-so-fun ones. Plus, what style pointers does Sarah Sivian have for the Minnesota Wild? As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 4, Episode 159. It's peanut butter jelly time. Soda Stick and the Minnesota Wild teamed up for another collaboration in honor of the duo that is Kirill Kaprizov and Matt Zuccarello. Get yours now exclusively at the Hockey Lodge. Plus, be sure to keep an eye out for some new Buttes merch at SodaStick.com. As always, you can snag 15% off all purchases when you use code BARDOMBEAUTIES at checkout. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Episode 159. It's going to be a good one. We have Sarah Sivian joining us to talk about all about style, hockey players, culture, things that are fun, things that are good, things that we love to see in the NHL. I do want to start off with something that I love to see in the, not necessarily the NHL, but the hockey world, Kirsten. Did you see, and I think she's just a 14-year-old, the silky mitts on this 14-year-old pulling off the Michigan smoother than I have ever seen it pulled off. It was Sports Center's number one play this morning while I was at the gym. Did you see it? How much did you love it? Can we get more of that in international competition, please? Um, I have not seen it, but that's going to be my immediate Google search right after this. But oh. I think that's awesome. And I think that just goes to speak on... Not so much how the game has grown, but how much the game has evolved. Um, we'll, we talk about this a little bit more with Sarah later on in the show, but just Trevor Zegris, like the, the Zegris effect, if you will, and the impact he's really had early on. So I think we're seeing more of this and trying new things, and I think it's great. I cannot pronounce her last name, but it's Nila Lupusonava. She is, in fact, 14 plays for Slovakia. They are competing in the under-18 World Championship. It was, again, it was just looked so effortless, and it just, it was the transition. Uh, Kirsten tried the Michigan earlier this week, and it it didn't look anything like that. So um, we should sure do a side-by-side, side, her doing yeah, it I, and me doing it. I'm going to, actually. <laughs> I'm going to. That's a great idea. Oh, Follow our man. TikTok. For more on that. But yeah, it was it was beautiful. She completed the hat trick, uh, beating Sweden as well. So you love to see that. Go check out the 2023 under 18 women's world championships if you have a chance, because a lot of talent, a lot of good team USA, a lot of Minnesota love as well. All good things. Now let's switch over to something that is not good. That's really just grinding my gears, if you will, Kirsten. Um, Connor McDavid. News came out this week, but my buddy Con who apparently wears, has worn the same socks like his entire career. And that might be like, oh, ew, gross. This is how gross it is, you guys. Like if Fred, Fred, if you want to toss a picture up there, he's fired right now because he's not on the record, but like he'll probably still edit this. Um, There's no toes to these socks. They look crusty. They look terrible. His explanation was he wore them because they stopped making them a couple years ago and he just really loved them. But I'm like, how can you love socks that have holes in it? Last year, Kirsten, I was all in on... I hate players that don't wear socks. I would rather him not wear socks in this case. They look moldy. Like they look so dingy. I had to brace myself when this got brought up because like just this now is burned in my mind and it's just a memory I need to erase. It's disgusting. Like I don't think he needs a pair of socks to be good. I think that's a superstition. Hopefully we can work past can this company just please go back into business or somehow like make him 500 pairs of socks so he can please throw these away? Like the germs have literally eaten through the sock, right? Like it's not that he's like a dirt, but here's, there's so much sweat going. Like I can't, and that can't be comfortable. I hate a hole in my sock. Like I don't want to wear those socks if there's a hole. Like imagine not having the entire toe. Knowing that he walked by me at the XL Energy Center when I was just minding my own business, going to though. get dinner. And I don't think he was, he was like walking in, like in his suit and everything. Oh. So if he, 
thinking he could have been wearing those socks in my proximity, I feel violated because of that. Like that is so gross. Because I went back to like thinking, because I, for whatever reason, and don't ask me, and mostly actually I do know the reason. So I usually look at a player's feet because sometimes if I don't know. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. First of why? all, there's two reasons. There's two reasons why I look at a player's feet in the locker room. One, when I'm in the visitor's locker room, there are generally many um, undressed men walking around. And so sometimes I just feel more comfortable kind of looking down to avert attention. I've gotten better at that since because I think it's important to maintain eye contact. Also do it because if there's a player that I don't know, generally they are wearing these slip-on sandals that have their number on it. So I can Mm -hmm. mentally take a note. Now, of course, I know who Connor McDavid is, but sometimes, and I started this thing last year where I would take an Instagram picture of my cute shoes next to like a man's bare foot and like make a little joke about it. So that's the other reason. There's three, threefold reason why I'm looking at a guy's feet. Um, God, this makes me sound weird. But I remember specifically like looking down at him because I had cute shoes on and I was like, "Ah, his feet are hideous. So I just didn't take the picture, but... There was no socks. I need you to do that when he's wearing socks. Those socks in particular. You'll see Edmonton again. It wouldn't have to wait till next year. Fully complete the research. We can go to Edmonton. They're done. Like just for kicks? Yeah. Okay. Sign us up. Going to the All-Star game. We're going to Edmonton. I think (laughs) we're going everywhere. We're taking over. I would like to go to Vancouver before Bruce gets fired from Vancouver. I do want to go to Seattle. There it is. There. <laughs> you just gave me the segue that I needed. Let's talk about Seattle. We had our good friend uh, Everett Fitzhugh on a couple episodes ago, episodes ago and kind of highlighted how well they're doing. Oh, my God. They are doing continuously better. And we'll talk more about this, too, with Sarah Sivian, who is a Boston Bruins reporter. But we're recording this on a Friday after Seattle uh, beat Boston, Boston in its own right, the best team in the NHL, literally right now, Seattle has won seven straight cursed. And, and for once, I think that maybe they're the team to come out of the West. I really don't. That sounds insane because they're, I don't think anybody in the Pacific usually is very good in, in recent years, but wow. Like what are they doing in Seattle? I don't know, but I hate it. Like literally this just, <laughs> Uh, my beef for Seattle just continues to grow stronger and stronger. I want to go to a game there. So yes, I know I said that they've got a really nice arena. They've got really cool jerseys. I like the aesthetic, but everything they're doing on the ice, like I hate because like, why can't we do that? Like, why can't that be us? You mean scoring? Because that's what the Minnesota Wild can't do as of late. It I seems. mean, that's, that's a big part of it, but like, can that just be us? Can we get it figured out so we can be them? I mean, it would be nice. I do want to talk about the Minnesota Wild and the lack of scoring. Again, we're recording this Friday after they just completed. They they got three out of four points in New York, which is great. They push the Rangers into overtime um, on Tuesday night, and then they eke out a three to one regulation win against the Islanders, which it was just a bad game. I mean, I really was not impressed with the game. Power play went over five. Um, the goals. Again, it seems the players have reverted back to what we saw at the beginning of the year where they're just trying too hard to be too cutesy. It's too many passes. It's not enough selfishness. It's not, you know, I think Mike Russo had tweeted out that Boldy's going to be one of the best when he becomes more selfish. And I absolutely agree. And I think for him, that's just so out of character, having met Matt Boldy over the years. Like he just seems like a guy that's always going to look for the pass instead of the shot. And so that is something that in his game he can work on, but that's also a personality trait that I think he possesses. But even like Kaprizov, it seems like he's going for the extra dangle instead of just taking the shot or, you know, you've got just, it's, I need more shooting. I hate to be that person that's like, shoot the puck, shoot the goddamn puck. I think you need to yell that from the press box, which I know violates a lot of rules. Like, but everyone. I think if you yell it from up there, they'll hear you and they'll start doing it. I, th- I mean, they always hear you. Fans, just so you know, the players, they hear you yelling, shoot the puck. And when you're cursing at them and, you know, whatnot, how could you not? No, I, I do respect the passion. Another thing, speaking of the wild um, and it goes into talking about Zuccarello and Kaprizov. Um, this was. An idea that was brought up, Sam Steele, maybe not gelling as much anymore on that top line. Somebody had suggested Ryan Hartman up there. What do you think about the current state of that top line? Um, you know, I wouldn't say, I think it's hard and it's funny. I was talking about this with my cousin the other day, because he had asked me, you know, my thoughts on that center position. And I do think it is extremely hard to find the right piece for that because 
while it's great that Zuccarello and Kaprizov have this chemistry, as I think we've noted before, and I, as I know Dean Evson has told media before, that they only look for each other. So that makes anybody coming up into that center position a very kind of like, what role, how do you play this role when those two guys are constantly going to go back and forth, back and forth? And Hartman seemed to really adjust to that. And maybe that's because Hartman was seen an elevated role for the first time in his career. Now, Sam Steele, same thing. And I think Sam Steele, though, has a higher skill set which maybe also kind of combats a little bit. It's kind of why you didn't see Marco Rossi there. You don't see some of your higher end centers playing there, you know, Jules Erickson either because you need somebody. And this isn't to like knock Ryan Hartman down because again, he has a very important role, but you don't need somebody that is a very highly skilled player. Victor Rask. Let's go back to Victor Rask being the number one center between like you need somebody that can kind of be, I don't want to sit because pylon is such a dirty word in hockey, but like, and not a cone, but you need somebody who can just kind of be there, help when needed. And I think the reason Ryan Hartman would work is because he's willing to go in those gritty areas and those get those greasy goals and kind of be that grinder that I don't think Sam Steele is. I think Sam Steele has a, a higher skill set um, possibly than than Hartman. So maybe that's why Hartman works so well. I say, why not? As we've talked about, Kirsten, might as well try it. Um, you know, Sam Steele, again, looks good there. But yeah, he's he's kind of dropped back a smidge. Yeah. And I mean, I, it's hard when you have, I just, yeah, like you had mentioned to piggyback off of you when you have that star studded top line and you have a very specific role to play. I can definitely see where, especially when it's Kirill Kaprizov, uh, Mm -hmm. how it would be a little more difficult to fit in there. Try it out. Let's see. Let's see Jewel up there too. You know, you know, that is what I would like to see. You would like to see that. I, I mean, heard you name drop Jewel when you were talking about it. And I'm like, yep, yep, there it is. <laughs> There's your door opening it wide open for you. No, I mean, I just want to see look- a game Jewel top line center again. I just want to see like, it. Do So how does, you know, the Rat and McKinnon and uh, Landis Gog line work? Like, right, like those are your top, those are your three best players on that team. And they make it work. So, I mean, I don't know how you can't, you know, have your top three players be your bet I don't know I don't well, know well I have an idea and it maybe it will make me sound like a grumpy person or like somebody who's mean but I'm going to say it anyways is Kaprizov and Zuccarello just more selfish than those other guys when it comes to like you had mentioned they only look for each other there's a third person up there who can help make plays that is literally the role of a center is to help make plays so I, I know no one wants to put any blame on Kaprizov because he is the star in Minnesota. He got his contract for a reason, but we have to take a look at things. Is he being a little too selfish? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Think I am not a coach. I, I am not a general about. manager. I am strict. As we know, I can't skate either. <laughs> so I just am throwing things at the air. Oh boy. If you want to see how well Kirsten skates again, please follow our TikTok account because we're cool. We have a TikTok um, and we went out and saw, shot some fun video. I will say I would like to get out to more rings. If you, if anybody out there would like to help teach Kirsten and I how to better our hockey skills, that would be much appreciated or even just kind of have some fun. Like I actually, and I think it's probably, you can only get better by getting out there and actually doing it right. Like without question, especially hockey, like you just kind of got to keep skating Cause I do feel like this was my first time in years that I was like, Oh, I could keep skating around here for a little bit. Like it didn't, my feet didn't hurt, you know, like maybe my skates are finally broken in. I don't know. It was very fun. I couldn't, I was ready to get off. My ankles hurt so bad. Cause they were <laughs> bent so far inward. We are true um, benders. But yeah. going back to lessons, I need more help than Jesse. So that's more targeted to me. Yes. I need yeah. help. Um, so yeah, this is me asking somebody teach me. Let us know in the comments. I want to be good. I want to be good. And I'm really just not. I always feel like a fraud. Like how, who the hell am I to criticize anybody? Like the next step is to get me in goalie gear and have people shoot at me because I'm so critical of goalies. And I recognize it's a very hard position. I recognize hockey is a very hard thing to play. And I certainly don't want to be just that old person sitting up there being like, you should do this when I've never played the game. So I would like to increase my skills. Like it is hard and it's fun, but it's fun. Like I enjoy it. You know, so let's get out there. It's winter time. Let's get out there. Let's go do it. If you guys would be interested in having us out to your outdoor rink or check it out, let us know in the comments below or shoot us a message uh, on Twitter. We'd like to do that. We're fun. We enjoy. I was just going to say, like, we're fun. We're nice people. 
Mm -hmm, exactly. It's a, we it's a sometimes time. say funny things. Sometimes. We try. We make roaring effort every single week. Fred might disagree, but every week we do. We're very... Very funny, very fun people. Speaking of fun and funny people, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Sarah Sivian. Stay tuned. We're back. Joining us now, the queen of style in hockey Twitter's most legendary follow, Sarah Sivian. Sarah, what's going on? <laughs> Please, you flatter me. Not much. Happy to be here. How are you? Oh, wonderful. You got to start with the flattery. You got to butter them up. But in this case, I truly do mean it. One of the most fun follows on Twitter. Are you having a good time on? It's such a <laughs> contentious space, right? Like I always have a love hate relationship with Twitter. Like if Elon Musk wants to take it all down, I'd be sad, but then maybe I'd be happy. I don't really know. Like what's your feelings? It would like release us from the shackles, right? Because on one hand it does give, especially women in sports kind of like and in for certain opportunities, right? It's like, because we have to prove ourselves so much more than men. So it's like, okay, here I am tweeting about these things. Like it, it, it has helped me so much in my career. And just like, I give a lot of thanks to it for everything it's done for me. But at the same time, it's the double-edged sword of like all the criticism and unnecessary hate. And even like people just being annoying that aren't even hateful. And <laughs> then the bad news, it's like kind of an addiction, right? And it, that's how these, apps are set up so I go back and forth with it totally but now that I'm not a beat reporter it's been great to be able to like I'll tweet what I like whatever hot take I want and log off and I don't yeah. have to look at the responses <laughs> and speaking of Twitter I gotta ask you about your iconic Twitter header from the Nashville Predators where there's <laughs> like not now Sivian I think that is so good can you what's what's the backstory to that what did you tweet I would have that as my header too I love it by the way I think I don't even remember what I tweeted. I think it was just like the Canes scored, but uh, I am really good friends with their social media manager, who is another woman named Sarah without an H in hockey. So <laughs> it's great that there's like a lot of women behind the scenes on these social teams, but hopefully more in the forefront soon. But Sarah has been doing a lot on, uh, they're giving her more like airtime and she's been crushing it. So if you see someone pop up, she always like pops up and it's like, hi, <laughs> it's Nashville Predators. So if you see that, that's her. How great for you is it to see, like, because as you'd mentioned, you've been a beat reporter, you get to, but you've brought such a different air to it, a different personality, something that we're begging the NHL to bring more of, right? I mean, how have you balanced kind of the fun in reporting when you're on the beat and to make sure that you're staying authentic and true to yourself? Or was that kind of a soul searching moment? I know for me, I have struggled immensely with it, right? Because Right now, the sphere of sports media in general doesn't look like what they taught us in journalism school at all. So I'm like, oh, am I doing this wrong? Am I doing this right? And like the old people saying you're doing it wrong and the young people say I'm doing it wrong. And I'm like, what am I? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do me. Uh, how did you come to that transcendence? Exactly. Yeah, that's such a good point. At the end of the day, you really have to just decide like what you're going to do and stick with it. And if, if it sounds good to you, you can know like you got to trust yourself. But it's so true. We're kind of in a no man's land. And I think. <laughs> Just like not getting too wrapped up in feedback can actually be good sometimes, right? Because I, my problem was that like my last year at the athletic, I think I just got so obsessed with like taking it to the next level or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, if something doesn't perform well, that's going to happen when you're writing three to four times a week, right? Like, and that's mm -hmm. okay. You need kind of those bad stories or bad ideas to just keep it saying, okay, cross that one off the list. That didn't work. Try as many things as you want. Um, I definitely it helps to not be married to a certain idea so much and be flexible. That's mm -hmm. what I'd say. Well, one idea that has worked without further ado, this is what the people want to talk about <laughs> the style rankings. First off, how do me and Jesse get on there? This oh. is true. Are you going to, I would like to request that you start some sort of sports media today. I'm doing a terrible presentation minus it's the white calves, which is badass in itself. But how do we get reporters on there? Cause I think Kirsten and I have a good shot at being top each and every week. You do. JT Brown started it. He has ended up on the list more than once and I've made exceptions. So I don't know, go all out on a theme night and you might be okay. selected. I try to make hard and fast rules to this. Then I'm like, cause people take it seriously. I never <laughs> took it seriously, but now I have to. So it's, it's like a badge of honor. Now I feel yeah. like when guys see themselves on it, like it's like a pat on the back, a thing of pride. Um, I would, however, 
like to see some wild players on there. No fault of yours. They just, they need to take it up a notch. What would you, if a wild player were to make it, I know you mentioned Ryan Reeves has really upped the level there. What, what would they need to do? Cause right now it's all beanies, ties, dress coats. Like they all look like clones. Very Minnesota, very Minnesota, vanilla, boring. Sorry. (laughs) It is Minnesota, but it's also cold. So I get it. But then you see Winnipeg and every day in Winnipeg, it's like Adam Lowry and a few others are like stepping up. So really no excuses. You got to up like the easiest way would be to up your hat game, right? Like everybody has a boring beanie, but what if you had a beanie that's like bright colors like Patrick Line, I don't know, but also yeah. stay true to yourself. I will say Reeves has made it a few times and he is really good with his fashion without being crazy about it. Like he mm-hmm. just has some really well-fitted suits. I'd say that. And I'd say the social media, I really like the social media team in Minnesota, but at the same time, they do a lot of black and white or like entrance photos that you can't really see the outfit. And that makes more of an impact than you'd think. Like for last year, the entire year, the Maple Leafs didn't post anything and everyone would get mad at me. I'm like, I can't, do you want me to go to Scotiabank arena? I will. I'll take pictures myself, but they'll kick me out. So that this year they started doing it and now they're on the style ranking. So sometimes social media managers just got to kick it up. Can this I This is all say- very good information. I'm taking notes. Um, but Jesse has a point right after, but quick question. Would a fedora help? Like, no, no, that, <laughs> that is past its prime. Oh, I'm trying to picture any like Kirill Kaprizov walk, walking in with a fedora. Like, oh no, that kid loves a beanie, loves his beanie. Um, I was gonna say what sums up Minnesota Wild style is going back to the bubble when they could have done track suits, they could have done anything, and they went with like these white polos and like khakis. And granted, leadership in the locker room has changed since then, but I was like, this is the worst thing I have ever witnessed in my entire life. Or like they always take the safe route. I feel like Minnesota in general, from team play to like things, which is so ironic because I think behind the scenes, they're not like they're very fun. Would you ever, Sarah, consider? And I could be your photographer, at least for the Minnesota Wild. These guys have good style. I've told Kirsten this after morning skate or like after practice they look nice they got good shoes like we're usually talking about kicks we're talking about sweats like everything fits very nicely is that something that you're ever going to dip your toe into again I'm sure the photos are hard to come by but just something to be considered shout out for our Minnesota boys here I love how hard you guys are riding for them. I, yeah, send me some pictures and I'll do it and, or get me in contact with them. I've gotten a few texts from like numbers. It's like my agent gave me your number. Um, I have a really cool shoe collection. If you're ever in X city, like let's do a tour. I'm like, yes, I would love to do all this content. And the funny thing is I'm not like some fashionista. Like, I think that's the funniest part of all this. I do have an appreciation for fashion, but I usually wear a sweatshirt to the rank. I, I that's just, I don't have the funds. But at the same time, it's just I wanted to showcase personality in the league. And it's the easiest way to do it is like because they don't have to say anything because you know how much of a like we before I sport, especially in Minnesota or any of these uh, big markets. It is they they want to be humble and they want to represent the team. But fashion I've seen is a way some of these players that are traditionally very humble can express themselves without saying anything. I seriously love that you have agents texting or getting <laughs> numbers it. to it's you. Needed. Like that is, is just, I don't even have words yeah. for that. Evander Kane commented on one of them and was like, this is biased. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it is We're against you. Sorry. <laughs> They're in the middle of contract negotiations. Like send yeah. me to a team that gets good <laughs> pictures of me walking into a game. Like this is taken on. <laughs> Did you imagine it would take on the life it is? I mean, as we mentioned no. earlier, Hockey is certainly trying to be cool in its own slight way. And you're a big part of that. I was watching the Flames game once and um, Nikita Zadorov was chirping me. He was like, I don't know if she has the best style opinions. I was, it was so funny. I, then I was like, oh my God, I can't believe like he mentioned my name and knew what this was. So <laughs> um, w- before we switch subjects, one thing I just want to throw on your radar quick, uh, Jacob Middleton, defenseman for the wild. If you want to look at his 10 black and white t-shirts, that's an option. Otherwise <laughs> the guys, again, specifically Jacob Middleton, they like to go shirts off in interviews. So, um, yeah. maybe Jacob that's more Middleton, the route that they like to go. MID. <laughs> yes. Interesting. I'll, I'll yeah. take stock of that. Yeah, just keep just keep an eye out for that. I mean, Sarah, what else do you think the NHL? I know because you are like such a such a proponent of fun while also obviously being serious. And I think that's something Kirsten and I like to inhibit as well. What else can hockey do to be more fun? I mean, it. I think in my opinion, 
needs to be changes across leadership and across who's making certain decisions, right? But what else can they do? More players like Trevor Zegras, I think, would be good. What are your opinions on that? Yeah, Zegras is great. Just kind of there shouldn't be a threat or a pressure to have to be conservative. You know what I mean? A lot of these guys yeah. just kind of are con- like they're older or not older, but like white men from Canada that have been sheltered <laughs> since they're 14 and go play juniors. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, some of them don't even know who Taylor Swift is. I was watching the devil's TikTok and they were like, who's Taylor Swift? I don't know. Kirsten will <laughs> take it on after her half hour here. She's on a <laughs> mission to find each Taylor Swiftie. In yes, the box. I, I am. That. And right now I have a lot of thoughts. Um, Sarah, if you want to tag team this project, I think we really could cover a lot of ground. I'm in, but I, I think players need to be around more culture and express like, I don't know. I, I think there are so many cool guys that aren't like cool in front of a camera. You guys know that, right? Yeah. It's like when the camera shuts off, they'll be more comfortable. I think part of it also is more female and more chiller reporters that aren't asking about the power play every second because people, not to brag, but it was like, it felt like players were opening up to me when I was with them kind of every day. And part of that is also being able to travel. So shout out to the athletic for letting me travel at the time, but they got comfortable seeing me around. And then I'm like, there's a lot of conversations we have that wouldn't be on the record and get like, you get to know these people and they're like real, Mm -hmm. they like movies and books. Some of them can read and it's, it's nice to hear about that. So I think less of like criticism after every single game has gone a long way for me at least no more get pucks deep get pucks to the yeah. net I don't need that like I loved being like I like to try to be more observant too like to find mm-hmm. those little threads right like oh those are sweet shoes so like I think I talked with Ryan Hartman about shoes and fishing one day for a good half hour he's my boy so yeah. it's like yeah like but you're right I think it is and I think females are a huge part of that you're back in Boston is that right I am. How much fun is it to catch your beloved bees and how insanely well they are doing? I know. I have to say, okay, can I tell a story? Yes, obviously. When I was thinking about staying with The Athletic and I was like, well, what if I helped cover the Bruins? And somebody was like, well, they're not going to be good this year. So every single win, I'm just kind of like, well... And I took that personally. Yeah. There's yeah. there's the T right there. Yeah. It's just funny. I don't know. I remember going to Carolina and they hadn't made the playoffs in almost a decade and then they became good. So I think wherever I go, every I'll go to Vancouver next and they'll be good. But establish that. That kidding. is your thing. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's been really awesome to see because there are so many good guys in this Bruins locker room that I if he even still grew up watching, but I loved their reaction to obviously um, oh my God, Mitchell Miller signing. They, they were taking this into their own hands and they were like, you know what? Like we mm-hmm. don't accept this. And then after that, they tried to rescind. I mean, he's still getting paid, which is a problem, but they rescinded the offer to join the Bruins, whatever that means. They worded it kind of funnily, but yeah. the respect you can tell the respect they have for each other and the game in the room. And Love it. It is a little stressful going from Carolina, where I was one of three reporters, to here, where there's 20. And <laughs> if you get don't get your question in, you just don't. Yeah. Like, sorry, move on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like Toronto. Well, <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Yeah. Um, well, another thing, too, you were just at the Winter Classic. What was that experience like? I mean, we got a taste of it here in Minnesota last year, but being in Boston for you, what was that like? Yeah, it was one of my first it was my first winter classic I've ever covered. It was the second one I've attended. I went to the Gillette one in 2011, I think. I don't know, but it was amazing. I was stunned at like all the minimal, like all the minute details that they had to do to pull it off. And I was there the whole week. Kind of, there was like, they were practicing there. There was media availabilities. Charo was there, the whole thing. And- Bobby Orr was there. Yeah. (laughs) I was really impressed with the details. I was impressed with, the effort the Bruins put into it too. I know they had the little retro 1935 um, Red Sox team outfits on and they have had so many outdoor games in the past 10 years. So they've had all these different, they did Peaky Blinders. They did like nineties Barbie, but this one was kind of a safer one, but then you found out all the details that they put into it. Like they got, um, Allmark had cleats from the fifties. He was showing us all and they were all just so into it. I love it's so cute when a team like gets into a theme. Yeah. That is like the God, 
oh, it just makes me dislike the wild sometimes a little bit more for but, so yeah. many reasons. <laughs> but I do think they feel pressure externally to kind of, okay, guys, we're in Minnesota, the state of hockey. Mm-hmm. But the Bruins used to be like that. And then I I keep such stock of social media on teams because I think it's so interesting. And now yeah. the Bruins kind of have this like secret TikTok persona that <laughs> this wonderful woman named Elaine has started. And she is so hip to the trends and like she gets the Bruins to do these ridiculous TikTok trends and they get they go viral and they do so well. So I feel like a lot of teams need to kind of just open themselves up a little bit. Do you think that comes from the top down? Because now I'm thinking like Bill Guerin's a fun dude. Like I imagine that he, and I know that Minnesota here, we have like the um, not weird wild commercials and the players have gotten into like this acting, which is, which is very fun. But yeah, like, where does that change? Cause Boston to me, it's right. I mean, Cam Neely seems like a stricter kind of dude too. Like, where do you think those changes are quote unquote allowed from per se? I think it's a little bit of everything and it's different in every circumstance. But I remember when I was covering the Canes, it was like, at first they asked for Tom Dundon's, the marketing team asked for Tom Dundon's permission. And then at a certain point he said, Hey guys, we trust you. You can do whatever you want. And that, I mean, they've taken some risks that have given them a reputation for being annoying, depending on who you ask, but they don't (laughs) care. Like I did a story (laughs) with them. I was like, you guys know some people think you're annoying. Right. And he's like, yep. And they're still reading and watching. So Mm -hmm. You know, it's like yeah. kind of the approach to it and not being afraid. Uh, one final question for you on the Boston end. I'm doing an impulse Boston weekend trip with one of my yeah. friends from high school in a couple months. Be my tour guide for a sec. Please. What do I need to see? Where do I need to go? Obviously the Bobby Orr statue at TD Garden. The area mm-hmm. around TD Garden has really changed and since I've been gone. It's like a whole experience. You go around there. It's a little touristy. I would say the North End, you can't go wrong. You got to go to Mike's Pastries, not Modern's. And I'll tell you more as the day comes. But Selfie, for your age, is a fun place to go for brunch. You got to go to Lincoln, Broadway, um, Capo. Stats is where I go to get a little crazy on a Sunday, a football Sunday, especially. That I'll take you there. You know what? I will take you there. We'll have fun. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this and I will be referring back to this video for all of these recommendations, okay. but let's do it. Let's do it. That'll be fun. Yes. North end for dinner. You got to go. I'll give you a few options. Noted. Thank you. I went to Boston once Please. I went to a Bruins game and that was about the extent of my actually no. And then we got a little turned up afterward at some bar, <laughs> but I couldn't tell you the names of, but it was very, I think I kept telling people to say their Boston accent to me because I was that person. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, it sounds so cool. I love it. Real embarrassing. No. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Final question, Sarah, we'll bring it back to hockey. Who's your pick for the Stanley cup? Who has been your pick? I mean, let's go back to like your preseason selection and how are they doing? And now that you've seen enough, who's your selection? Ooh, good. Qu- I think I had the abs repeat. I is not looking so good right now. They're no. falling apart. Even with all the injuries, it's still not, they should be doing better. Cause you look at the Bruins and they, had a lot of injuries at the beginning of the season to key players, but they got yeah. it together. I'm thinking the Bruins win the cup or the Canes. Oh, imagine that. Imagine you covering that Eastern conference final between be those. Fun. Sarah's worlds colliding. Yeah. Yes. It'd be the 15th time. I and then Penn that. state goes to the national championship. And oh wins my against, God. Oh, you know, I'm going to be there. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be there. St. Cloud state, St. Cloud state. We're going to throw that in there. Fine. Go Gophers. <laughs> no. Oh, well, uh, I see we're all very no. conflicted here on this. <laughs> I draw the line at the Gophers. <laughs> no, give it to them. It's been a long time. Those those banners are pretty dusty up there. I was around yeah. at the time. You guys weren't. I don't want to hear it, Jesse. I do <laughs> yeah. not want to hear it from Come you. On. Um, what about Seattle? How do we feel? I know Kirsten hates Seattle with her every fiber of her being. Yeah, really I do reasons. I well, I will say I think I had bigger beef with Vegas during the expansion draft. So. <laughs> That was more of the deal. I was very worried when the expansion draft came around that Seattle would pull a Vegas and do a repeat of that. I was pleasantly, not pleasantly surprised, but I was very pleased that they didn't do that. I don't know. They're, they're just on my list. I don't know. You're just like, why not us? When when are we? Minnesota's an expansion team. That didn't happen. Being the pick me girl I am. I'm like, why not us? Like it's (laughs) Minnesota's turn. It's been over 20 years. I think that's fair. They're but I, I don't know. I think it's cool to see like the youth movement in the league and how they're forcing themselves into the conversation with the speed and scoring all these goals. I don't know. I 
I feel you on that with the expansion teams like going off, but I feel like don't hate the player, hate the game. Like why are these other GMs so incompetent <laughs> that they're giving away these players? This well, is fair. It's a that totally a different point. team than their expansion. I mean, to a point, right? Like they actually have people come. I'm just amazed at watching them. Like I never mm-hmm. once thought a team from the Pacific was going to like advance in the playoffs and Seattle's looking to prove me wrong now. It's really exciting. And I'm so yeah. glad we have Alice and Luke in there to break yeah. it all down for us. I know, right? There you shout out to too many men. <laughs> yeah, we're the good luck. Give your use your platform, Sarah. Go ahead. Talk about too <laughs> yeah. many men. We love the podcast. What can I say? We have it's like our group chat come to life. It's like this. I mean, we gotta support good podcasts in hockey these days because exactly. sometimes they're hard to come by. But mm-hmm. get you mix it up. Go yeah. ser- seriously, yeah. go check them out. They are awesome. Allison and Shana. We had Shana on the pod last year breaking down the Minnesota Wilds. I think they were pretty good last year. They were so they that's... were. Not so much this year. We'll see uh, what they're happens. Good. They're in the mix. A lot of teams in that conference are kind of like, what's going on? I mean, I think Dallas is going to be your go-to in the Central, right? Like, and I never thought I'd see that actually kind of finally work for Dallas, but I love Jake Ottinger, hashtag one of us, Minnesotan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and one of us, BU. There, oh, that's a very good point. Wow. There you go. Are you BU or BC then? You like BU? Um, I like Northeastern, but I Ooh. am indifferent to BC and BU. I think I dislike BC more for reasons, but I bad boyfriends. B yeah, BU gets the slight <laughs> edge. <laughs> so you guys get it. I get it. That's you always have that. Like, ah, had a guy there. Not great. And honestly, <laughs> I respect it. it because mm-hmm. yeah, I get it. Yeah. No, I think I think Dallas will be the one. Winnipeg's still surprising me, but I love Bones. So I think that's a huge reason why they're doing okay. Minnesota. I love, them too. I love yeah. their whole family. They're so nice. Are they? I had his son at the draft and he was like, love your work. I was like, thanks so much. What? He seems like such a, like a player's coach, right? Like he definitely like has turned that program around because going from Paul Maurice to him, I think has been the main difference because you still have all the same players. You still have guys that have been there forever, which is why it's surprising they're doing as well. We only have one beef with Bones here in Minnesota. <laughs> Last year when he was coaching for Dallas, they had Riley Tufty, who's a Minnesotan. And of course we love Ooh. to have our local kids come oh, yeah. and play. And he spoke to the media. He was supposed to play all of this, yada, yada. He gave this really heartfelt how he was at the children's hospital and oh. saw the, yeah, beautiful, great story. Kids scr- healthy scratched uh, right before the game, right before the play. After, <laughs> after um, he spent all of his money buying tickets. Oh, yeah, he bought a bunch of his yes, friends and family that. to come to. I was so and, mad when that and happened. And I will say, Bones seriously seemed surprised. He's like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, what? Like, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Like, something had happened with a player being available to him that probably wasn't. Like, I don't think it was as intentional as everyone in Minnesota felt it was, but it was just a shitty situation. It was so out of character for him. And yeah. I'm just like, I'd like to know more about why that happened. I, he did seem surprised. But, like, yeah. can't, that can't happen. No, just play the kid. Like, it's one game. Like, you could just play the kid. He wasn't doing let great do anyway. It. No, right. Exactly. Clearly didn't work out. But that's the only... Yeah only beef we have with Rick Bowness. Well, again, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. You are the best. Be sure to give her a follow on Twitter. Follow her on all of her social medias. Uh, always good stuff. What I need you to send me a new DJ playlist as well, because I already listened to your like <laughs> one playlist and it's epic from our flip cup tournament. Shout out to your dad, by the way. I adored you. Oh dad. my God. Yeah. I, it's so good to be back with the family. I'm living in their basement right now. And that's like a badge of honor. I'm like, yeah. I will stay here until you pick me out. <laughs> Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Well, you guys have fun in Boston. Maybe I'll show up. Maybe I won't. Probably won't because, yes. you know, kids. I, kids. Oh, like, let's plan a road trip. We need to plan <laughs> a road life. trip. Let's go yes. somewhere new. I'm going to go back. to Coachella in April. Oh, oh. I'm way too old for Coachella, I feel, but I'm huh? super excited. Why am I just hearing oh. about this for the first time? Because the problem is it's in April when playoffs start. So I have to actually pull the trigger and either commit and say, screw the wild. Either you're not making it or I won't cover you or not do it at all and be a fuddy duddy we'll see interesting okay back and we'll forth. But back i feel like you back. guys bring that out of me you know it's, it's like that mom and mean girls oh you make me young thank you like, <laughs> you're not old jesse you're not old at all i covered gray hairs yesterday guys like the reason i went blonde is because it covers gray far better than brown. i would blame that on the wild and i would 
put that on your expense account and make them pay to get your hair done. Cause I think that's Actually the problem good. that's stressing you out. I'm going to slip that through. I'm going to slip that through to Billy G. He told me, you know, quote unquote, I am the uh, assistant GM for him. So that's good. <laughs> it's, it's appreciated. So uh, again, Sarah, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. We're back. Thanks so much to Siv for coming on, joining us, having a little bit of fun. Seriously, go follow her if you aren't already on Twitter. Make sure you follow her work at Bleacher Report and be sure to check out their podcast, Too Many Men, uh, another fully female hosted podcast. It's her, Allison Lucan, who works with Seattle Kraken and Shana Goldblum, who works with The Athletic as well. So good people uh, as always. So shout out to her. Let's wrap up this week's episode with our up for debate. I have a really good up for debate next week, guys. So please stay tuned. I was going to switch gears and do it this week. And looking back, I should have just for timeliness, but it'll be next week. Anyway, this week's was fine. Uh, I wanted to know with the trade deadline coming up very soon, it's always a relevant topic. Uh, Kirsten, who would you target at the deadline? Would you target a defenseman? Would you target a top six forward or would you be okay with getting some prospects back in exchange for any player that you decide to trade away? This is a very, very hard question because I can find something to back up any single one for why it would be a good idea or why it could like be a bad idea. Yeah. Um, mm, I would say I would like to hold off on the prospects if we have, because right now we're currently sitting in a playoff position. So not saying our prospect pool is not deep because everyone knows it is. Um, but I think just having already brought up some of the players this season, I would want to wait until it's a new year and you can start fresh, give them a fair opportunity. So I think I want to hold off on the prospects. Um, defenseman, I think the defense has been better. So I'd still want to hold off there. So I'm going towards a top six forward. But that being said, the wild really need to be all in. And if you're getting a top six forward, you need to make a push in that postseason. So that's the only stipulation. If you're doing that, you're doing it to win. Are you okay with just a rental top six forward then? Or do you want somebody that would be ex- you would extend or you would get them more long term? Ideally, in the position the wild are currently sitting in, I would say target a top six forward to have longer. Um, if they can advance in the central and solidify more of a solid playoff position, then I would say I'd be okay with a rental, but at this Mm -hmm. moment in time, someone that can be here a little more longer term. I mean, obviously it always comes back to like, well, who are you trading away and what are you getting back in exchange for that? Right. And we all know how Matt Dumba's name constantly is floating around there and given his play in the contract and the salary cap, yada, yada. Uh, that seems like a very likely tra- target, but I agree. I wouldn't want a defenseman back. I think Brock Faber, our guest from uh, a couple weeks ago, is truly ready to probably hop in at least for that second half of the season should you trade away. Dumba, once the Gopher season ends with that national title, probably. Um, but <laughs> um, I I would like a top six board. I wouldn't mind it being a rental, again, just because of the salary cap. And you would need unless you're getting somebody that's retaining all of the salary because they just want to get rid of him. Like that's going to be huge either way, no matter what position you go for, I think will be salary retention. Um, And I imagine Bill Guerin is having that conversation quite a bit with different GMs that are calling about various players of his. Uh, I would say you don't probably need any prospects because I like the prospect pool where it's at. Um, You know, for me, a prospect is like, you're literally just trying to shed a player. And I think even, you know, you don't want to do that for any of the guys that are on this roster right now. I think they're all worth much, much more. Um, you know, granted, I guess having an extra draft pick is never terrible, but I don't know much about this year's draft class. So it's yada, good. yada. It's is really it? good. So maybe, I mean, maybe I would be okay with a draft pick, not a defenseman for sure. I had top six forward rental and then a, a draft pick. Well, if you're going for a forward in this year's NHL draft, it is loaded. So it's not a bad option. My girl, you're going to have to lead our conversation on the draft. You know it all. Girl, I got That's, you. It's above my pay grade. Uh, <laughs> well, perfect. Uh, we'll, we'll schedule that. We'll schedule that come like May. We'll have a okay. draft thing with Kirsten. It'll be great. Stay okay, tuned. no pressure now. No pressure. Well, I've given you till May to figure That's, it out. Okay, that's fair. But February and March are very busy months. <laughs> I know. I even just picked up an extra Minnesota Wild away game to cover remotely in February. And I was like, it's going to be a nice paycheck, though. It will. 
give me the monies. Uh, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Be sure you go give your money to sodastick.com. Check out the latest Bar Down Beauty storefront. Lots of cool stuff in there. We'd love to see you repping the buttes. Uh, of course, we're always so appreciative of you guys checking us out, engaging with us, sharing our content, enjoying our content. Uh, so go be sure to check out Soda Stick, who has more of our content, if you will. Uh, and as always, they're great partners of ours. Also, shout out to Grain Belt. Thank you to everybody who came to our live show out at Kazi's on Saturday. Uh, or excuse me, Friday. Duh. You guys came on Friday. You didn't come on Saturday because there was a wild game on Saturday. Came out on Friday, seven to eight for Buttes Live presented by Green Belt. Uh, we will have one again in February. Still trying to finalize that location. Stay tuned to our social media channels for all of that information. Shout out to Talk North for featuring us on their lovely network. Royal Credit Union, less fee, more free. And Jim Beam, cheers to you. Cheers to me. The official whiskey sponsor of your Minnesota Wild. That's going to do it. Again, you guys are awesome. Like, share, follow, rate all the good stuff help us continue to grow also be on the lookout for maybe a little kickstarter project that the buttes are going to be putting together because we want to take this podcast even to the next level we're in year four guys let's let's go let's get a studio let's get a home for the bar down beauty so stay tuned for more information about that if you'd like to donate and help us accomplish that dream uh in the meantime go wild have a great rest of your week we'll see you later bye